How's it going, everybody? This video is inspired in part by uh, a couple of recent videos from Barking Madly. That's with two Ds. I'll put a link in the description bars of the more recent video and then the other one. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Now, <clears throat> if anybody watching this video happens to live in Massachusetts and um, has a long goatee and says um a lot, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, man. The great ore hunter. <laughs> Does that make you an ore monger? <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, <clears throat> you may want to put on a fresh diaper because this video is going to be about knives and uh, the carrying of knives. And I know uh, to shall not be infringed, this will rub him the wrong way. And for that, I am sorry. And I'm sorry about Massachusetts. And I don't know what to tell you. Now, to Barking Madly and anybody else who's listening, this is something that I've researched somewhat extensively, and um, Floridians who have a concealed weapons permit need to research this, because while Florida has a concealed weapons permit, which means we are open to what, what sort of, uh, wrong way, what sort of weapon we want to carry from knives, nunchucks, or a firearm, other states are more restrictive, and it's uh, primarily a, a firearm carry. <clears throat> An example would sort of be, uh, as far as differing, differing knife laws, whenever I go up to Georgia, while I can have, say, my firearm, my usual carry knife, which is longer than three inches, uh, I can no longer have for the state of Georgia, so I have to shift that up and be aware of it. Now, what is the basis for these knife laws? It's not a particular uh, set of laws in the books, by and large. What it comes down to is actual case law. So a person is caught committing a crime, they go to court, and what they are charged with becomes the status quo or or common law towards edged edged uh, weaponry. <clears throat> now, uh, Barking Madly mentioned that he was looking to take his. I believe your example was a was a drop point style blade here, uh, and you wanted to to cut to back cut the top, and in which case you would make a a dagger of sorts. And you were wondering, oh, what the hell's the difference, right? Well, this is, uh, as it sits, is a tool, you know? Um, this is an old bear cutlery uh, composite, and uh, it's a tool as it sits. Its, its primary function is as a tool with a single edge, and you know, you can work it and get in what you need for, uh, for your cutting tasks. Whenever you back cut, the item transcends tool and actually becomes a weapon. Uh, case law has deemed that the only purpose for a back cut on a blade is for the use of a weapon. <clears throat> now, does it somehow become a dagger? Yeah, not quite. But you can kind of see, if if you think about it, you know, while this is a uh, while this is a dual dual hollow ground dagger here. Um, you can sort of see from from a drop point, it all it seems almost like about half of it. You know, here's a single hollow ground versus the dual. Um, but this, by no uh, by no stretch of the imagination, uh, would be something that somebody would consider to be a tool. Yes, it can open boxes, but that's not its design. And um, when I'm carrying it, that's not its intent. I'm not going to pull this out to open up a letter. This is a coupon, which uh, has another function. Uh, the nice thing about it is it looks somewhat unassuming. Coupon is completely legal. However, upon further inspection, you find this coupon is actually a stiletto. Purpose of a stiletto dagger, uh, which would be uh, abbreviated uh, stabbing engagements. You can go ahead and get into a lung. And the idea being, you take in a person's lung, 
you puncture their lung and before somebody can identify the the offending condition they have perished but I mean you definitely see the difference this is a well, you see that it's actually uh, I bought this off the Mac tool truck so I mean it's actually yeah. um, so now barking madly this is just to you now you mentioned California laws and um, how you want to get the heck out of there. I'm afraid I can't let you come here, friend. And I will tell you why. And I'm going to use this to point it out. Because the other day, when you made that video about the guy getting robbed, okay, and when the 911 operator asked if the guys were armed, and he said yes, and the cops went ahead and shot the kid when he reached for his waistband, and you mentioned that the person who got robbed should be somewhat liable for that kid's death, that, sir, disqualified you from living in Liberty Land. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you got to take the good with the bad because it's that sort of thinking, that sort of, that sort of uh, messed up thinking that, oh, he's, he's somewhat liable because he said the kid was armed. Dude, a cop, when, when the guy's reaching for his waistband, he, he's going to take a bullet. I mean... It's, uh, and then to, to get on the bandwagon and say, yeah, he, he's somewhat liable. Now, if you meant it a different way, like, well, the reality is he will be liable, but damn it, he shouldn't be. Why should the guy who got robbed be liable for anything that happens to the person who robbed him? That is so immoral. I can't even, ugh. okay. <laughs> so, in summation. Barking madly has to stay in California until uh, until he denazifies himself. Um, a knife that you carry must be a tool. It all boils down to intent. So if the intent of you carrying your knife is as a weapon, and there's only one way to firmly prove that, then uh, you know you're not allowed to carry a knife as a weapon. You're only allowed to carry it as a tool, and if the abilities of the knife changes to the point where it exclusively identifies it as a weapon, then it's treated as such legally. The idea is, man, don't get pinched. <laughs> but uh, in other news, that's that's some messed up stuff about your uh, your friend getting his getting his rifle back from from Las Vegas, and um, I am very. Very sorry to hear about that, and that that really does suck, dude. All all kidding aside, I I was just playing a little bit about the the knife thing. If you if you move down here, or to uh, Texas, or uh, you know Oklahoma or Arizona, we we'd fix you up pretty good. We'd get that uh, we'd get that commie crap off you. Got a uh, got an ice scraper. Take the pink take the pink right off your ass. <laughs> but I, I had also heard like in um uh whenever you're in California, technically if you disassemble your rifle to a certain point and you reassemble it, it then becomes a new build. So like say you are uh pre ban pre ban compliant and technically if it's disassembled to a certain point, say at a gunsmith or whatever, when it's reassembled it then becomes a new rifle. That's that <sighs> semantical jumping through hoops legalistic crap that just drives me straight up a wall personally all right so uh that's it man it's good seeing y'all and it's good to be on here um i wish i was at work right now but i am home so we'll see y'all later